Back when E.B. White was writing Charlotte's Web, there was nothing more exciting for a farm family than the county fair. And that's where I'm taking you today from the Oosterhout Free Library. I'm Miss Melissa and Wilbur is going to the county fair. Charlotte and Templeton are stowing away in their attempt to save his life. It was illustrated by Garth Williams and published by Harper's. Charlotte says, now then, there is no time to be lost. Wilbur will soon be put into the crate. Templeton and I must get in the crate right now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled between the slats, and pulled straw up over him so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte, I'm next. She sailed into the air, let out a drag line, and dropped gently to the ground. Then she climbed the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say Zuckerman's famous pig and two stowaways. Look out, the people are coming, I mean, I mean, shouted the gander. Cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. The big truck with Mr. Errol at the wheel backed slowly down toward the barnyard. Lurvy and Mr. Zuckerman walked alongside. Fern and Avery were standing in the body of the truck, hanging on to the sideboards. Listen to me, said the old sheep to Wilbur. When they open the crate and try to put you in, struggle. Don't go in without a tussle. Pigs always resist when they are being loaded. If I struggle, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. Never mind that. Do as I say. Struggle. If you were to walk into that crate without resisting, Zuckerman might think you were bewitched. He'd be scared to go to the fair. Templeton poked his head up through the straw. Struggle if you must, he said, but kindly remember that I'm hiding down here in this crate, and I don't want to be stepped on or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way or squashed or buffeted about or bruised or lacerated or scarred or biffed. Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when they get to shoving you in. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head, they're coming. Look radiant, Wilbur. Lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly into the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Arable cut the motor, got out, walked around to the rear, and loaded the t lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mrs. Arable got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mr. Zuckerman came walking down from Mrs. Zuckerman came walking down from the house. Everybody lined up at the fence and stood for a moment, admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realized that the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That some pig, said Mrs. Arable. He's terrific, said Lurvy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, he's clean anyway. The buttermilk certainly helped. Mr. Arable studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig, he said. It's hard to believe he was the runt of the litter. You'll get some extra good bacon and ham, Homer, when it comes time to kill that pig. Wilbur heard these words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old sheep who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees, all radiance gone. His eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern. He's fading away. Hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling in all fours into the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Oink, oink, oink. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What fantastic creatures boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, you get out of that crate this instant, commanded his mother. What do you think you are? I'm a pig, cried Avery, tossing handfuls of straw into the air. Oink, oink, oink. The truck is rolling away, Papa, said Fern. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arable dashed to the driver's seat and pulled on the emergency brake. The truck stopped. The geese cheered. 
Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knot hole so Avery wouldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery crawled out of the crate on his hands and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Throw water on him. Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurvy ran for a pail of water. Fern climbed into the pen and knelt by Wilbur's side. It's sunstroke, said Zuckerman. The heat is too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see better. Lurvy returned with cold water and dashed it on Wilbur. Throw some on me, said Avery. I'm hot, too. Oh, keep quiet, hollered Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, came to. He rose slowly to his feet while the geese cheered. He's up, said Mr. Arable. I guess there's nothing wrong with him. I'm hungry, said w said Avery. I want a candy apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arable and Lurvy grabbed the pig and pushed him headfirst into the crate. Wilbur began to struggle. The harder the men pushed, the harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. Nothing wrong with this pig, said Mr. Zuckerman cheerfully, pressing his knee above Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove. With the final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Lurvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur couldn't back out. Then, using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it aboard the truck. They did not know that under the straw was a rat, and inside a knothole was a big gray spider. They only saw a pig. Everybody in, called Mr. Arable. He started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman and Lurvy and Fern and Avery rode him back, hanging on to the sideboards. The truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered. The children answered their cheer, and everybody went away to the fair. When they pulled into the fairgrounds, they could hear music and see the Ferris wheel turning in the sky. They could smell the dust of the racetrack where the sprinkling cart had moistened it. They could smell hamburgers frying and see balloons aloft. They could hear sheep blatting in their pens. An enormous voice over the loudspeaker said, Attention, please! Will the owner of a Pontiac car, license number H2439, please move your car away from the fireworks shed? Can I have some money? asked Fern. Can I too? said Avery. I'm going to win a doll by spinning a wheel and it will stop at the right number, said Fern. I'm going to steer a jet plane and make it bump into another one, said Avery. Can I have a balloon? asked Fern. Can I have a frozen custard and a cheeseburger and some raspberry soda pop? asked Avery. You children will be quiet until we get the pig unloaded, said Mrs. Arable. Let the children go off by themselves, suggested Mr. Arable. The fair only comes once a year. Mr. Arable gave Fern two quarters and two dimes. He gave Avery five dimes and four nickels. Now run along, he said, and remember the money has to last all day. Don't spend it all in the first few minutes and be back here at the truck at noontime so we can all have lunch together. And don't eat a lot of stuff that's going to make you sick to your stomachs. And if you go on those swings, said Mrs. Arable, hang on tight. You hang on very tight. Hear me? And don't get lost, said Mrs. Zuckerman. And don't get dirty, and don't get overheated, said their mother. Watch out for pickpockets, cautioned their father. And don't cross the racetrack when the horses are coming, cried Mrs. Zuckerman. The children grabbed each other by the hand and danced off in the direction of the merry-go-round towards the wonderful music and the wonderful adventure and the wonderful excitement into the wonderful midway where there would be no parents to guard them and guide them and where they could be happy and free and do as they pleased. 
Mrs. Arable stood quietly and watched them go. <sighs> then she sighed. Then she blew her nose. <gasps> Do you really think it's all right? She asked. Well, they've got to grow up sometime, said Mr. Arable. And the fair's a good place to start, I guess. While Wilbur was being unloaded and taken out from his crate and into his new pig pen, crowds gathered to watch. They stared at the sign, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Wilbur stared back and tried to look extra good. He was pleased with his new home. The pen was grassy, and it was shaded from the sun by a shed roof. Charlotte, wait, watching her chance, scrambled out of the crate and climbed a post to the other side of the roof. Nobody noticed her. Templeton, not wishing to come out in broad daylight, stayed quietly under the straw at the bottom of the crate. Mr. Zuckerman poured some skim milk into Wilbur's trough, pitched clean straw into his pen, and then he and Mrs. Zuckerman and the Arables walked away towards the cattle barn to look at purebred cows and see the sights. Mr. Zuckerman particularly wanted to look at tractors. Mrs. Zuckerman wanted to see a deep freeze. Lurvy wandered off by himself hoping to meet friends and have some fun at the midway. As soon as the people were gone, Charlotte spoke to Wilbur. It's a good thing that you can't see what I see, she said. What do you see? Said, asked Wilbur. There's a pig in the next pen and he's enormous. I'm afraid he's much bigger than you are. Maybe he's older than I am and has had more time to grow, suggested Wilbur. Tears began to come to his eyes. I'll drop down and have a closer look, Charlotte said. Then she crawled along a beam until she was directly over the next pen. She let herself down on the drag line until she hung in the air just in front of the big pig's snout. May I have your name? she asked politely. The pig stared at her. No name, he said in a big, hearty voice. Just call me Uncle. Very well, uncle, replied Charlotte. What is the date of your birth? Are you a spring pig? Sure, I'm a spring pig, replied uncle. What did you think I was? A spring chicken? Ah, oh, that's a good one, eh, sister? Mildly funny, said Charlotte. I've heard funnier ones, though. Glad to have met you, and now I must be going. She ascended slowly and returned to Wilbur's pen. He claims he's a spring pig reported Charlotte, and perhaps he is. One thing is certain, he has a most unattractive personality. He is too familiar, too noisy, and he cracks weak jokes. Also, he's not anywhere near as clean as you are, nor as pleasant. I took quite a dislike to him in our brief interview. He's going to be a hard pig to beat, though, Wilbur, on account of his size and weight. But with me helping you, it can be done. When are you going to spin a web? asked Wilbur. This afternoon, late, if I'm not too tired, said Charlotte. The least thing tires me these days. I don't seem to have the energy I once had. My age, I guess. Wilbur looked at his friend. She looked rather swollen, and she seemed listless. I'm awfully sorry to hear that you're feeling poorly, Charlotte, he said. Perhaps if you spin a web and catch a couple of flies, you'll feel better? Perhaps, she said wearily, but I feel like the end of a long day. Clinging upside down to the ceiling, she settled down for a nap, leaving Wilbur very much worried. All morning, people wandered past Wilbur's pen. Dozens and dozens of strangers stopped to stare at him and admire his silky white coat, his curly tail, his kind and radiant expression. Then they would move on to the next pen where the bigger pig lay. Wilbur heard several people make favorable remarks about Uncle's great size. He couldn't help overhearing those remarks, and he couldn't help worrying. Oh, now, was Charlotte not feeling well, he thought. Oh, dear. All morning, Templeton slept quietly under the straw. The day grew fiercely hot. At noon, the Zuckermans and the Arables returned to the pig pen. Then, a few minutes later, Fern and Avery showed up. Fern had a monkey doll in her arms and was eating Cracker Jack. 
Avery had a balloon tied to his ear and was chewing a candied apple. The children were hot and dirty. Isn't it hot, said Mrs. Zuckerman. It's terribly hot, said Mrs. Arable, fanning herself with an advertisement of a deep freeze. One by one, they climbed into the truck and opened lunch boxes. The sun beat down on everything. Nobody seemed hungry. When are the judges going to decide about Wilbur? asked Mrs. Uckerman. Not till tomorrow, said Mr. Zuckerman. Lurvy appeared, carrying an Indian blanket he'd won. That's just what we need, said Avery, a blanket. Of course it is, replied Lurvy. He spread the blanket across the sideboards of the truck so that it was like a little tent. The children sat in the shade under the blanket and felt better. After lunch, they spread out, stretched out, and fell asleep. Next time, Judgment Day for Wilbur.